Hello and welcome to the Legacy Crusaders YouTube channel. This is Benji and today we'll be talking about five tips during the main phase. First, uh, we're going to be talking about evenly matched. Now, evenly matched is a, a trap card that's normally activated in the battle phase, but the tip regarding the main phase is that a lot of duelists feel the need to set their cards or put cards on the board during main phase one before entering the battle phase. But if you put cards on the board, you're putting your cards at risk. Cards are most well protected in your hand, secondly they're most protected in your graveyard, and then thirdly they're most protected on your field. So you really want to avoid putting cards on the field if possible, uh, especially with evenly matched as a card out there. So just to, if you're not familiar with the card, it says at the end of the battle phase, if your opponent controls more cards than you do, you can make your opponent banish cards from their field face down so they control the same number of cards that you do. If you have no cards, uh, if you control no cards, you can activate this card from your hand. So if you just, act, if you just set a, a lot of cards on the board and then go into the battle phase and attack, at the end of the battle phase your opponent can activate evenly matched, Banishing all cards on your board except for one, and they get banished face down. And if you control a token, you have to banish all cards except for the token. We'll actually have an episode of five tips on evenly matched in the future, and we'll also be discussing a lot of things related to that uh, when we do the battle phase episode. Um, so if you're going to set a card in the main phase, you should, especially main phase one specifically, you should have a reason for doing so. Um, there was a format, it was true Draco format, I was playing dinosaurs, and I had a baby Sarasaurus, but no starters in my hand, and my opponent was on true Draco. So I set baby Sarasaurus, and I had twin twister in hand, and my opponent had already gone first, and I suspected that they had a true Draco trap card set, specifically uh, true Draco apocalypse, so my thought was that I would just activate this, they would be destroyed, and because uh, I had a monster on board, they would take the time to destroy it for me. So I had to try and incentivize my opponent to destroy my card, because there's not a lot of benefit for me setting a card before activating Twin Twister against this deck. I could have simply just not done the set first. So I had to try to convince my opponent to activate the, their True Draco Apocalypse to destroy my monster. And so they did so, and then I summoned Soul Leading Over after and did full combo uh, for what my deck did. So if you're going to do things in main phase one, uh, putting cards on the board, you should have a reason. And the reason in my case was to try and get my opponent to destroy the card for me. Um, you could also do that to bluff and imply you have something, but... Um, if you're going to put cards on the board in main phase one, have a reason. That is the uh, first tip here. Uh, another reason might be if you ever see someone playing this card, it's a very crazy card. This is Grand Horn of Heaven. It says during your opponent's main phase, when they would special summon a monster, so that's an inherent summon or a, a summon that does not start a chain, you can negate the summon and if you do destroy the monster, then your opponent draws a card, and then it ends the main phase. So if you are concerned uh, that your opponent's going to activate this card on you um, during main phase two, you might want to set some cards uh, beforehand, but I think more of a tip for this would be that you should probably just uh, set cards before summoning in main phase two, because the worst thing that can happen with this card is you uh, you go into main phase two, you've just come out of the battle phase, you immediately summon an inherent summon, then you get your summon, and they send you to the end phase. So if you're a bit concerned um, with potentially having your phase ended for you, you might want to set cards earlier, but it's more likely that this would happen in main phase two if you're that concerned, because if they use this in main phase one, you just uh, go into the battle phase, go back into main phase two, and try again. Uh, so that's something to be concerned about. Uh, next tip is to be concerned with column placement during your main phase. Now, uh, this goes for both players' main phases. Um, if you're setting up a board, you might want to avoid setting up uh, columns in which your opponent is likely to be able to summon a mech knight without making any attempt to do so themselves. Often your opponent will start their turn if they're playing mech knights by setting a spell or trap card in front of one of your cards. It could be that it's infinite impermanence and they're trying to set it up so it has some value for negating um, your spells and trap cards. Um, but they also could be setting it there for uh, summoning mech knights. Uh, more likely than not, if they're trying to summon a mech knight, they'll set their cards in front of a um, monster, because monsters are less likely to leave the field. If you set a, if an opponent sets a spell trap in front of your spell trap, odds are theirs is impermanence, but if you suspect they're on mech knights, you could just activate your spell trap. Uh, if it's a quick play or a trap card, you could legally activate it. You can activate it, it'll go to the graveyard, and then their column is removed. So be concerned about creating columns that your opponent could use. Um, uh, so that's something else to do. Also, if your opponent's setting cards in front of your cards, they could be something like Broken Line, which is a weird one that doesn't come up that often. It does get played in Eldritch sometimes. Uh, some control decks will set five, so what they do is they'll set four cards in the columns where your cards aren't, and they'll send a fifth card in the column where your cards are. So that'll happen during the main phase. So you can always try and move your cards around or activate cards to avoid um, columns being set up to your detriment, whether it be for Mech Knights, Infinite Impermanence, or uh, Broken Line, such as in a Trapped Eldritch deck. Uh, now, here's our third tip during the main phase, which is that you can simply force your opponent to activate cards by simply threatening to end the main phase. Now, just something else you may not know is after the main phase, you proceed to either the battle phase or the end phase. You do not have to tell your opponent which phase you are going to try and enter. You just say end of main one. 
they imply you are ending the main phase. There is no such thing as end of main one, so if your opponent chooses to activate a card such as Nibiru the Primal Being or Shadal Schism, which they may try to do because if you leave the main phase, you're pre preventing them from having the opportunity to use these once per turn cards, and sometimes they want to make sure they get used before their next turn. In the case of Shadal Schism, they might want to summon a Construct on your turn so they can summon a Winda on their turn. Um, so by threatening to leave the main phase, by just saying, I would like to proceed to the, the next phase, or I'd like to end the main phase, you can get them to either make an action that they might not have been ready to do um, by threatening. So if you summon five times and you can set up an OTK after they Nibiru you, you can just set up a, a big enough board, threaten, battle. It'll force your opponent to go into the, use their Nibiru. And then you can, um, uh, and resolution of that, because there's no such thing as end of main phase, if your opponent decides to use Nibiru, you're still in the main phase and you can just set up another OTK. Similar to Schism, you can force your opponent to set up Winda. Uh, when you have an out by threatening to leave the main phase and then if they want to summon their monster to get use out of their card um you can then try and uh out it afterwards so threatening battle phase or end phase or just ending main phase is a good way to get your opponent to make actions that you might not have uh, been able to deal with unless you force them to do so so the fact that those cards have restrictions are the reasons you're allowed to do that um next up is um, Miscellanosaurus from the dinosaur deck is often used in the main phase. It makes the dinosaurs unaffected. One of the things you can do is not only threaten battle phase, you can actually go into battle phase and then come back to main phase too. And, uh, in, or if your opponents, uh, during their main phase, they use Misk to protect themselves from cards, you can let them go battle phase. And assuming you don't die during main phase two, you can activate, uh, your Nibiru to take out their board, assuming they didn't set up a negate. So, uh, Miscellanosaurus only applies to the main phase that it was activated from hand in, so it's possible to um, push the effect off to the next main phase. So you can uh, threaten some plays uh, by using your battle phase to do things in main phase two. I'll talk about that a little bit more later on, but that's just something related to uh, changing phases. So I want to address that now. Um, let's see. Uh, next is priority. Um, our third tip is on using priority in the main phase. So at the start of the main phase, you may want to revive a or return your chaos ruler to your graveyard using uh, Psyframe Lord Omega. So if you use Cyframe Lord Omega, um, you during your stand, your opponent's standby phase, you can use this effect to return a banished card to the graveyard. So if you're playing Chaos Ruler, you can maybe try and return that to the uh, uh, to the graveyard, and then you have then whoever the turn player has priority to make the first action in the main phase. So one of the things is, let's say you have your own Omega and you've returned your Chaos Ruler, and now it's your opponent's turn, their main phase. They have priority to make the first action. So. You can't just activate Omega and take a card out of their hand. So some of the things your opponent are likely to do is they're either going to activate, set, or summon the card that they want you to hit with Omega the least. Uh, one of the cool things that I've learned you can do with Omega specifically is allow your opponent to set cards. If your opponent happens to set a card, um, uh, I don't know why I have duplicates of this. Uh, if they set a card and um, you have like Twin Twister, you could potentially just not activate the effect to take a card out of their hand again and see if they'll set a second card because odds are they're going to set a card and then try and get the other card out of their hand. So they might set one, then activate one, but if there's a chance they set two cards, then you can just twin those cards and then take another card. So you can try and um, use the fact that they have priority to let them put a card on the field so you can like twin twister it. Um, so you, because you don't have priority to take a card from the hand, you can give them priority to set a card. They might activate cards, so you never know if this is actually the best play, but it is an option. Um, similarly, something you should know on your turn is you have priority, so super poly is a good thing you can do. Um, specifically, you might want to um, set a monster, uh, like a Shadal Hedgehog, during the start of the main phase, or, and what this does is priority will pass to you, so you'll be able to use the fast effects timing chart. So you take an action that doesn't start a chain, like setting a monster. Uh, that's the blue box on the left of the fast effects timing chart. Again, this chart's on the Konami website. I'll link it in the description. Um, but if you set a Shadal monster, um, and it doesn't cause a trigger effect, uh, the turn player has fast effect priority. So you can activate Super Poly and then fuse your opponent's monster with your Shadal into a window. And if you're not playing Shadals, you can just set a dark monster maybe and then out your opponent's Dragoon or one of their Despia monsters um, into a Starving Venom Fusion Dragon or maybe a Predaplant Draco Stapelia, something like that. But the point is uh, you can make two actions in a row as long as your first action doesn't start a chain and your second action is a quick effect uh, during the main phase. Common ones include set monster, activate super poly. Um, uh, next up, um, is something, because I play Infernoid, so I have a lot of cool tricks with Infernoid. The same thing applies to having Lair of Darkness on the field. Uh, if you already have it on the field, then you've kind of skipped this step, but if you activate it, you get into a position where this step is available. So what happens is you activate Lair of Darkness and wait for priority to pass to you for um, open game state, which is the top box in the fast effects timing chart where you're allowed to make an action. 
And if your first action is to normal summon Lilith, uh, Lilith Lady of Lament, assuming the normal summon of Lilith doesn't start a chain, um, you have the first um, option to use a fast effect, and your fast effect could be tribute a monster on the field using its effect. So if your opponent has Dragoon, but they let you resolve Lair, uh, odds are this isn't something that's going to happen, but if you then normal summon Lilith, you have priority to activate the first effect, so you can activate Lilith Tribute, their uh, Dragoon, and move on with your game. All right, um, next up is um, using your battle phase to make your main phase easier. So if your opponent summons a very difficult card to deal with, such as Herald of the Arclight, one of the things you might want to do is to simply summon a monster and attack it and try and make plays in main phase two. The problem with using main phase two, uh, rather than main phase one, is you can't establish um, a board that can kill your opponent in, in the battle phase. You might have to um, arrange for your opponent to just not defeat you, so it is preferable to not have to do this. Um, another thing is you can just force out their cards with other effects, and if you can force them to activate and negate or something of that nature, you can perhaps resolve triple tactics talents during your main phase. So you can use your main phase to bait them into using a card effect, so you can use talents maybe to draw cards or take one of their other negates. Um, and that kind of wraps up this particular episode on the main phase. In the future, there'll be some five tip videos on specific cards. Uh, make sure you check out the episode on the draw phase and the standby phase. And we'll talk about the battle phase very, very soon. I hope you guys enjoyed. Like, subscribe, all that good stuff.